Hello, this is Brunwyn Lund on another walking tour on Bornholm. I'm up on the very northern point of um, Bornholm in a place called um, Hammer Ulla or Hammer Point. And behind me is Hammer Ulla Fur or um, Hammer Point Lighthouse. And uh, we're going to walk from this lighthouse to another lighthouse which is called Hammer Lighthouse. Um, so I hope you enjoy the tour. So you can see the snow on the ground here and we're actually going to have a whole lot more snow in the next uh, few days. It's going to be a big snowstorm on the weekend. Just have to remember the way down to the water. That's the path I was looking for. <clears throat> so we're at the very top of the island and I'm going to walk from here around to a lighthouse in another part of the island. It's going to be a bit precarious because it's icy and slippery, so bear with me. I might have to scramble over a few spots.
So I'm essentially looking for a path that turns right. So I'm hoping, because I haven't done this walk before, that when I get to the bottom of this path, there will actually be a right-hand turn so I can walk right around the head the furthest sort of northern point of the island but let's see what happens right now this is just leading us straight down to the water which is fine because it's going to be a very dramatic thing with all the ice and snow on the rocks oh no it turns left doesn't really look like it goes anywhere that path. So let's see where this goes to anyway. Right, here we are. Wow. Quite a view. Yeah, looks like there's a walkway down there. Along the coast there. So I'm going to follow this um, path on the right hand side. And uh, if I keep following around the coast, I should come to the other uh, lighthouse. So let's see where this track leads us. very calm day today with no wind which is really nice Sandy and very rocky. Oh, a blue dot. That must mean we're following some sort of path and a yellow dot. That's good. It means, you know, <laughs> this path does actually lead somewhere if it's got a blue or a yellow dot associated with it. I've discovered on my walks so that does make me feel a little bit better about where we're going it doesn't feel too cold probably because it's not very windy but uh, as I was driving up here the car said it was minus four degrees so it's at least nice and cool 
which is always a good thing for a walk. I've got family and friends in Australia right this minute sweltering it out in 40 plus degrees Celsius heat. Bloody hot. So um, it's quite good to be here and film these icy extremities in the Baltic by the Baltic Sea for all those people who are feeling a bit hot. <coughs> My dad was saying that earlier this week it was 46.6 degrees Celsius in Adelaide. That's just nuts. And apparently the grid in, um, I don't know, one of the grids in Melbourne's gone down for some reason or another and there's 30,000 people without air conditioning in 44 degree heat. I really, I really feel for those people. That's just horrible. My sister works in Alice Springs she said you go outside this time of year it's either a fan forced oven or an oven depending on the wind so I've always been quite well you can hear the ducks talking to each other I don't know if the camera's picking up that noise I actually did a little bit more reading around this camera actually and oh no it's humans <laughs> I think they're behind me yep, a little bit of good old Danish being spoken in the background there Retired. Retired. I'm quite surprised. Normally up here, so isolated. I mean, this is just this part of the world. There's particularly in winter. There's not much going on. So it's quite nice to see three young chaps actually going for a bit of a run along here. So that's great. A lot of enterprises going on up here in the north of the island. Of course, there's the hotels, there's brewery, and there's a lot of, a lot of alternative lifestyle, which is just fantastic. So it's a it's a very beautiful spot of course it's a bit bleak at the minute because it's winter but I find it quite interesting to enjoy the different seasons I think what I'm going to do with the channel is um, I'm sort of thinking about how to group the films and I think I'm going to group the films into seasons but then I'm sort of a bit like well I'm not only going to be filming Bon Holm where the seasonal changes are so incredibly different from each other I'll also be filming places when I'm traveling <coughs> and you know the seasons aren't so vastly different from each other in other parts of the world so I'm just thinking about how to categorise the films so it's easy to sort of pick up the ones you want. I've got to, I've got to do some YouTube courses on, on that sort of stuff and work out the best way to categorise it because I can easily see that before too long I'm probably going to have a hundred films on the, on the channel and 
it'll be really important to be able to navigate to the ones that people want to watch. <coughs> Ooh. Oh, this is the chapel. Oh, I've always wanted to come here. I didn't realize it was here. I thought it was further south. Wow, this is cool. I can even read you a little story about it, I think. Solomon's capel or chapel. So the chapel of Solomon was probably built early in the 14th century. Jesus. At the request of the Archbishop of Lund. The chapel was built in two stages. First, the small rectangular interior of the church was built, and later the porch was added to the south. Solomon's Capel was built in connection with one of the herring markets, which came into existence in the 13th to the 15th centuries on the eastern and northeastern coasts of Bonhomme. Furthermore, immediately northeast of this chapel, the stone frame of a holy well has been discovered. Ooh. The holy well and Solomon's Capel quickly lost importance after the Reformation in 1536. Wow. It's a pretty peaceful spot to have your church, isn't it? I'm just wondering if there's anything, because, you know, obviously the Danish, is, there's a lot more information. That's just talking about the influence of the Pope in Rome. Yeah, it's just talking about what it's built up, built with. It started being restored in 1923. I haven't got very far, have they? So it was the um, merchants from Hamburg and Lubeck who um, who were, um, you know, running the herring market. So it was a Hanseatic League thing going on. Yeah, so all through the summer until the end of September. And there was a nice mooring place for the ships <coughs> excuse me to moor themselves so um yeah no that's just talking about the holy well yeah so they haven't done really much um renovations or restorations since 1923 <coughs> it's sort of weird that they restored it with bricks which wouldn't really match. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking in 1923. They kind of did some weird stuff, which kind of, mm, yeah, I don't know. <coughs> anyway, I guess they were doing the best they could. Yeah, so it's pretty good. In fact, I'm going to follow that path, I think, rather than the other path that goes up behind the church. But, uh, yeah, that's great. I've wanted to visit this spot for a long time. I just didn't realise it was so far north. I thought it was a bit further south along the west coast of the island. <coughs> so we'll go out and go along that path. See if we can find this other <coughs> lighthouse. Oh, you can see the foundation of the wall, how it was around the, around the church. It's pretty cool. I guess that must have been where they had the fish in that thing there. Timber thing. Put the fish in. <coughs> and there's a little harbour over to the left. Where they would have brought the fish in for the market. <coughs> Actually, I have a feeling maybe that other path goes up to the lighthouse, but we'll go along here for a bit and 
see what we get. There's another path there too. That sort of the area is riddled with paths. Oh, we've got a green dot. I haven't seen a green dot before. I think we've seen blue, yellow or red. Right now, <coughs> ahead here, I'm pretty sure that's the next um, lighthouse. I think I think I actually have been on this path before. We just never got as far as as John's Chapel. Oh, oh sorry, Solomon's Chapel. John's Chapel is another place we have to do a walk. That's incredible that place. But Solomon's Chapel. I think we actually got about this far, and then we went. Oh, Let's turn around and go back because we'd actually parked in Ellinger, which is a good hour's walk away from here, I think. So, <clears throat> of course we were, that always happens, doesn't it? You quit when you're so close. Three feet away, the three feet away will Keep going for a little bit longer. You'll achieve your goal. But sometimes you just think, oh, I'm never going to get there. So, of course, it's important to keep going. So let's see if I can achieve my goal getting to this lighthouse.
Haha. I spy the top of a lighthouse. So, this is it. <coughs> the lighthouse to lighthouse walk. I wanted to do this for a very long time. Quite a different lighthouse to the to the other one up on uh, I think it's called Hammerknull Lighthouse the other one and this is called Hammerfur or Hammer Lighthouse because this is the whole Hammer region everything's kind of named after a hammer because the area looks like a big knob of a hammer stuck on the top of the island so this is the Hammer Lighthouse and then I think the other one is the hammer point or hammer knot. Knull means knot. So hammer knull lighthouse. So it's sort of the knot on the top if you like. So but it's quite different because this lighthouse is actually rendered. to the other one which has just been left in bare stone but anyway fairly important structures lighthouses they do a pretty important job There it is on our left, 1895. And then this road goes down into Ellinger. It's quite a nice walk as well. Might do that one another day. But for now, this is the end of our lighthouse to lighthouse walking south tour. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Bronwyn Lund signing off on another Dream Life Day from Bonholm.